Hello, my name is Stuart Scott. I am one of the trainers here at Cloud Academy, specialising in AWS, Amazon Web Services. We will begin to look at how to best manage your compliance that you need to adhere to within your AWS environment. Your compliance requirements can come from many different sources. For example, you may have a requirement for your environment to be HIPAA compliant if you're managing healthcare records. Or perhaps your security team requires certain criteria to be adhered to, such as ensuring SSH is not applied to specific security groups. Or your operations team may dictate to you that certain EC2 types should only be used for certain environments to conform to internal standards. Maintaining compliance and internal standards for numerous parties, both internal and external, can be difficult to manage and can lead to mistakes, which in turn will eventually lead to non-compliant services making their way into production. This can be a huge risk from an audit perspective and also from a security stance. AWS Config allows you to utilize config rules to help you manage and organize this compliance, which acts as an automatic resource compliance checker. When a change is made to a resource, AWS Config will check to see if the resource matches a rule with the help of a Lambda function, and if so, it will check the compliance of that resource against the rule following the changes made. There are two different types of config rules within AWS Config, custom config rules and AWS managed config rules. AWS managed rules are a set of predefined rules that cover a lot of best practices, so it's always worth browsing these rules first before setting up your own, as there is a chance that the rule may already exist. These managed rules cover five different topic areas, compute, database, management tools, security identity and compliance, and storage. Do bear in mind that you can edit specific parameters of managed rules within these topics. And so if there is a rule that very closely matches your requirements, then you may be able to edit it by selecting different triggers and parameters to reflect the changes that you need. This can save you a lot of time trying to recreate your own from scratch. Before creating, modifying and configuring your config rules, you should first identify what compliance and standards that you need to adhere to. Define the requirements from all parties, but remember, there is a limit of 50 config rules per region before you need to contact AWS to request an increase. Let's consider a simple scenario and how these config rules could be used. Let's say we are security architects responsible for ensuring specific security requirements are met in the following deployment. A new web application is being released into the production environment that consists of multi-tiered infrastructure with front-end web servers in a public subnet, application services with EBS and a back-end RDS database. The application and environment itself is expected to scale with demand both up and down. We have been told that from a security perspective, SSH must not be used for the web server security group under any circumstance. Where used, all EBS volumes must be encrypted. The RDS database must be configured for high availability at all times. And data stored by RDS must be encrypted. Now, obviously, during deployment, we can oversee the implementation and ensure that each of these elements are met. We can make sure the security groups are correctly configured, storage encryption is activated, and that multi-AZ is configured for high availability for the RDS instance. So why the need for these config rules? Well now, let's consider the following. Once the initial deployment was carried out and the security checks were carried out manually, the environment was then handed over to support and operations to maintain and look after. Over time, the application scaled up, additional resources were added, and there may have been some ad hoc incidents and in general maintenance of the environment which was carried out. The support and operations team, although they were made aware of the security requirements, they may not have adhered to them at all times, perhaps due to human error, lack of knowledge or laziness. Your environment now has a situation where some volumes are not encrypted and SSH has been activated on the web server security group, perhaps to troubleshoot an existing incident. As you can see, over time, your environment changes and maintaining the same level of security implemented at the start of the project may not be continuous throughout its lifetime, which leads to mistakes and security holes within your infrastructure. AWS config rules can notify you of these security misconfigurations. If, for example, in this situation during deployment, we activated the following AWS managed rules, restricted SSH, which would check whether security groups would disallow incoming SSH traffic, encrypted volumes, this would check whether EBS volumes are encrypted. RDS multi-AZ support. Checks to ensure high availability is configured for your RDS instance. 
an RDS storage encrypted. And this checks if storage encryption is enabled for your RDS instances. With these config rules in place, a notification would have been sent to the configuration stream stating that a resource had changed its state from being compliant to non-compliant. These notifications could have been configured programmatically to notify your security team who could have then investigated as to why this had happened and understand who made the change through the use of the configuration item by utilising the CloudTrail information recorded when the change happened to the resource. By using config rules, it allows the appropriate action to take place when a notification is received of a non-compliant resource, which may include resolving the security issue identified and ensuring the resource becomes compliant again. Remember, just because a resource is flagged as non-compliant does not mean it is removed from your environment. It will continue to function. Identify who or what made the change. If an employee made the change, advise and educate them on the importance of security and why that resource requires set configurations. If it was a service, check your automation configurations to ensure it doesn't happen again. So as you can see, using AWS config rules allows a continuous monitoring solution for a wide range of uses to ensure compliance is maintained within your environment. The example we have used was a simple security scenario but the scope is huge, especially when implementing custom config rules. Thank you for your time and good luck with your continued learning of cloud computing. Let's get started with the training.